Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a nice and early Wednesday morning. Want to be wishing you well. Want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest Wednesdays possible. My God, it's already hump day. This is crazy. This week is already flying by. I've almost completed the computer. In fact, it pretty much is complete except for the software. So I'm really excited about that. The heart of the cave is almost alive and Bitcoin's actually moving. So what more could you ask for? As we get into the live scene right here, right now, wasting no more time. Bitcoin charging its way up, playing rope dope along our support. And actually, resistance rounded out this massive formation right here uh, over the past uh, month or so, creating a nice triangle between about 4,000 resistance and using our support right around uh, 3850. This support has been pretty valid for a little over a month now, uh, getting one, two, three, four, five spike lows. And now we are going back up to test resistance right around 4,000. Of course, my opinion yesterday was on the more bearish side uh, with contingency upon this blue box territory right here. As long as we were below it, I was going to remain bearish. The second that we get back above it, I actually did take a tra uh, trade to the upside. Of course, it's always important to actually verify yourself here, especially on a venue like, you know, YouTube, because no one, no one, everyone talks about trading, but no one actually shows their fucking trades. So I have a, um, I, uh, I designed a streamer account just for this this purpose and have a nice long position from uh, 3930 producing uh, about half a Bitcoin profit also have a little bit of um of, of options going on as well. I believe I'm short the 4000 straddle, which I should be looking to get rid of soonish. And then also short some out of the money at yeah, April's uh, producing some decent profit as well. So, of course, again, that's a streamer account. You know, overall, it's relatively small. So, again, I just want to show that, hey, if, you know, as a trader, it's not about hitting the home run each and every time. It's about, you know, it's about hitting the it's about hitting the singles, man. Four singles hits, you know, makes a home run, right? And overall, more importantly, my opinion was wrong on this yesterday. I was leaning to the downside. Of course, you know, that's kind of a bullshit statement because it's like, well, as long as we're, leave, you know, as long as we're living below the boo box territory, the second that we take it out, it got long and, you know, that's that's separating trading from opinions, and of course, uh, and that reminds me, all my programs are on the sale are on sale for the rest of the month with the code uh, Year Twenty. Let me just quickly show it right over here. Uh, that's a trade like professional program, which is the all encompassing technical analysis program that goes over technical analysis, trading strategies, uh, risk and position management, understanding the underlying market dynamics, and of course, access into the members only Discord community, plus access to a couple of proprietary indicators as well. The master options program is just like that, but with regards to only the derivative products of of options. Both those programs are thirty five hours plus long each. So understand it's, it's not just a massive financial commitment, but it's also a massive time commitment. And uh, and then the jewel indicators are quite literally just access to the jewel indicators. The code is uh, year 20 in all capitals, Y-E-A-R, -E if I can spell properly, then the number is two zero. And I always want to remind, and I always want to remind people, please, for most people, these are not going to be applicable for it's they are designed for much more hardcore people looking to do this typically in the sense of 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 a living and there's no real hold handing like through going through like how to set up an, an, an account on an exchange so of course you know if you're super new take advantage of my free stuff it's all there on youtube and it's probably gonna get most people you know 90 percent of the way that they want to be most people don't need to invest in a program like this to to do what they want to do just because i mean most people don't want to become a professional trader they want to you know it's like a hobby right um which is completely understandable i mean we all have different lives and and, and different perspectives but for the people who are looking for a little bit more of a serious venue that would be there for you anyways back onto the actual uh back back to onto the actual content right now let me make sure that i'm not flashing any sort of silly uh silly sales there we go okay awesome great good and Bitcoin essentially is filling out this whole formation right here. Uh, volume signature on this guy is getting quite mature as well. Yes, we did have another pop up to the upside, but I'm not seeing a pop in volume to uh, kind of confirm that uh, either which way. I don't really see a break. <laughs> you know, of course, uh, upper resistance would be coming in a little bit above 4,000 at this current price trajectory, and uh, support would actually be riding the green 50 exponential to the downside, uh, rising at around uh, 3860 actually now. So whichever one breaks first, that'd be the next direction that I'm looking for. There is a measurement to be made on this baby as we can just take a nice measurement tool right here, a really fucked up measurement tool. And uh, yeah, if we were to break it up to the upside, I'd be looking for that move to about 4,400, 4,500 ish area. Um, by the same token, if we break it out to the downside, I'd be looking for another test of this rising support trend line that's been kind of holding in all the lows or grabbing all the lows since uh, since December lows were put in. Uh, let me actually just get this right. I'm curious if it lines up with this perfectly. Oh my God, it does. Nicely done, Mr. Bitcoin. So of course, you know, as long as we're within this area, um, it does have equal equal, e bleh, equal opportunity to break out to the upside or the downside. It's like a social justice warrior's fucking dream. And we are getting quite full in this formation. There is an apex in our, sorry, on uh, April 12th, it looks like. And usually when these formations get about, you know, 69 to 70% full, they become extremely likely to explode. And uh, I'd say that we're, you know, kind of on the verge of that right now. Let's look over to my other screen. My God, Forex is moving. Bitcoin is moving in 50 cent loss. Great. <laughs> awesome. Um, 
Anyways, uh, I do want to check out our daily odds. Sort of daily stokes are still down, but are losing momentum to the downside. More importantly, each and every time that the daily stokes, whoops, uh, whoops, Jesus Christ, I'm just clicking wrong everywhere. Uh, more importantly, the daily stokes have actually been pretty damn accurate each and every time that they've actually crossed the downside above this 80 marker right here, calling all of the major dumps of the past year. And uh, while they are looking weak right now to the downside, it is still cross to the downside. So I do want to make sure that that is, or sorry, I, I, I do want to make sure that I'm clear about that. But each and every time that we've gotten above this, uh, the, uh, this dotted marker at the 80 mark, uh, that has called all the tops of the past year. Uh, this was your top at 12,000 before heading down to 6,000. This was your top at 10,000 before heading down to 6,000. This was your top at 84 before going down to 6,000. This was your top at 74 before 6,000. This was your break of 6,000 to 3,000. And once again, we've gotten in this range, but not really reacting in the way that I would look for if we were going to have immediate continuation, which I don't believe that we are. I mean, I think it's quite obvious <laughs> that we're not going to see it right now. Um, what's probably more likely is that we spend some more time consolidating this triangle and then then I'd imagine right around the end of the month, we're going to break it one way or the other, which is going to have confluences into the monthly because, well, when the month ends, we get a new monthly. And let's actually go over to the monthly and see what he's looking like right now. As a monthly is going to be well above that green 50 exponential moving average, a very, 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 very important marker right here. As Bitcoin broke this green 50 exponential moving average for the first time in its history uh, in December of 2018. And then I've been using it as resistance for each and every month um, after that. And depending upon how we close this month right now, we will have a chance to break it to the upside. However, if Bitcoin does end below it, more importantly, and it is right around 3990, or sorry, th uh, sorry, not 3990, 3900, see, Jesus Christ, little under 3900. If Bitcoin were to actually end below there, I would interpret that as majorly bearish from the overall higher time frame perspective, especially looking at something like this with the last three uh, monthly dollars closing below the 50 exponential, which tells me that there is price action pressure there and also the bigger account are you know paying attention to this on the higher time frames which is very 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 important because this would confirm this as consolidation which i think is quite obvious on the lower time frames as verified by the volume signature down around here in the price structure and that would imply a more bearish resolution to this consolidation coming off of a major downtrend consolidating between a major exponential as well so the big thing here is how we close in the next few days and of course as you know as bitcoin gets closer and closer to the actual um to the actual uh, monthly total close uh, which we have now three days away for by the way i forgot to mentioned that the programs are on sale till the end of the month jesus christ man should probably like say that piece of information my god um you know i would be cognizant of this thing because we are you know plus or minus about 80 bucks away from it right now and 80 dollars in cryptocurrency land is nothing which you know, we've seen Bitcoin do $300 moves in the span of one minute. So I'd be looking at something like this and I'd be thinking to myself, okay, well, <laughs> what is that? You know, you know, if we have three days, that's fucking eternity in, uh, in cryptocurrency land. Or sorry, is it three or four? Do we have 31 or 30 days in March? We have 31 days in March. So it ends uh, Sunday. All right, cool. Yes. Yeah, so, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd imagine that we do see some fireworks before Sunday, which is probably going to have confluence and lead into a breakage of this triangular formation right here. If Bitcoin is above 3,900, whoops, wrong one. There we go. If Bitcoin is above 3,900, I'd imagine that this triangle probably does break to the upside. And that is where I start looking towards, I believe it was that 4,400 number. Let me just make sure my account is safe and safe. There we go. Uh, yeah, right around here, kind of around your prior high. Yeah, 4,400 would kind of make sense. Um, will be resistance along the way around, uh, around your prior high at around uh, one, you know, 4100 to 4150. Um, by the same token, if it does break out to the downside, if we end below 3900, well, it's actually a perfect uh, move all the way down to the, uh, you know, all the way down to this uh, support trend line that's been holding up all of these lows uh, since since middle of December. So, again, um, you know, it's going to be a waiting game until that happens. Obviously, if we were to break this triangle one way or the other before the end of the month, I think that would probably be good enough for me to be making decisions off of as. You you know, there's only so much time now, but uh, you know, there are there uh, there there uh, there always is potential for hunts and all that good stuff. I do also want to show that at that 4100 level, we do have the purple 200 exponential, which is still resisting price action, and uh, I would be considering that this is still a local high as it stands. Looking at the weekly, I mean, you know, looking at the daily, it does look like we have a legitimate chance to actually break this to the upside. Looking at the weekly, I would be less suggestive of that as I look at our last weekly as a rejection of the 200 exponential right here which has been stopping all of our highs ever since uh november since we got into this more aggressive downtrend getting one two three four five six highs or so um 
and that is resistance until it is not. And more importantly, because this this would I, you know I'd interpret this as a local high. I'd be looking at this and looking at our oscillators and saying that the RSI is actually printing some hidden bearish divergence, which we have seen continuation off this Doji dildo. So is that the right way to be looking at it? Well, I would say as long as we are below the 200 exponential, I would say that. So the higher time frames, I would you know I'd still be a little bit more bearish on. Of course, from a macro time frame perspective, you know I'm not I'm certainly not bullish. Um, as a trader, I have to be neutral uh, opinion wise. I, I'd still be leaning to the downside as long as we we're respecting the purple 200 exponential on the weekly as resistance. That would be my big marker for that. Just to make sure. Jesus Christ, man, this thing is moving like a fucking madman right now. Unbelievable. Um, anyways, more importantly, so <laughs> just talking to my forex is just sweet talking to her. Um, so of course, you know, if Bitcoin did both open and close a weekly total above this purple 200 exponential at 4100, that would drastically change my tune on the medium to high time frame picture. I would be looking for that extended run into the 4000s, um, like we just spoke about 44 to 4500, pretty, pretty, pretty likely. Um, really, I'd be looking for a, a retest of the daily 200, uh, simpler 200 exponential somewhere. And I think they're hovering around 47 to 4,800 right now. So yeah, you know, but of course, when it comes down to the weekly, um, I think that this does kind of help temper expectations as I'm not necessarily fully convinced on a chart like this. The RSI for the weekly, I would argue is quite bearish. Um, not only are we just kind of retesting the same levels that we saw hold this bitch up since, uh, July of 2018 to the dooms drop in November from 6,000 to 3,000, uh, uh, which likely will will act as resistance, as we spoke about before. There is hidden bearish divergence, um, assuming that this is a local high, which I believe still is the right way to be stating that, as long as we are below the high of the prior. And more importantly, we do see that RSI is kind of floating up, while price action, again, is not breaking a major support of resistance. So, you know, looking at price action right here, the, the major resistance is the 200 exponential to the upside on the weekly, which is 4,100. When we have not broken that, but RSI is still floating up, that is very concerning to me because that is allowing the RSI to reset set and then price action you know doesn't really break any major areas and then the bears take over again is typically what happens and so i'm not i'm not like an rsi first type of guy i do use rsi it's certainly in my repertoire web web love how the fuck do you say that no it doesn't even matter how you say it um but uh but yeah uh, uh i would imagine that those people are saying that that would actually be a bearish setup uh, let's go to the three day uh did we close a three day last night i believe we did yeah we did no we did we no we no we did not sorry uh no not even close uh we just began a new one the other day it looks like and uh rallying off the 21 exponential so again the the three day 21 exponential also getting the support uh pretty damn well um so could be making decisions based off that i do want to check out our three day uh stokes three day stokes have actually opened back up so this is what i was talking about yesterday it's absolutely critical where these next three day stokes close because if we close down if we basically close anywhere below i'd imagine 39.50 they will close down and that to me would have implications with looking at the higher time frame picture because whoops uh because this guy right over here has been governing all of the highs on this on the three-day stokes ever since the high at twenty thousand in December of twenty seventeen. Uh, we got the we uh, we obviously got that high, then the high of uh, of May at uh, at ten thousand in uh, last year. Then we got the high eighty four in August last year. And then once again, we're kind of approaching this area. So if I were to see the stokes start to lose more momentum and start to curl down, well, that would be my kind of indication that hey, uh, this is still being respected and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend, and that's been a very powerful trend. Um, so again, a lot of these things in confluence with each other are still. You know, the jury's still out, especially with that move last night. It does offer up the potential for more consolidation. Probably another, you know, prob probably grind the 4,000 area a little bit more. Um, two day, what is two day looking like? Yeah, two days just right up, right back at the 50 exponential. I'm going to go over here to my BitMexican chart and uh, make sure that this one looks good. Yes, it does. The 50 exponential coming right around where? Right around 3990. So right around that 4,000 level, you know, it's you know it's 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 about the same. Um, I'm curious what the oscillators are looking like. Two day stokes are up. They are actually crossed up and gaining momentum to the upside. And believe that we did just get a new tick on that one. Uh, two day RSI is looking. Mm, neither bullish nor bearish, a little bit more neutral, um, a little bit more neutral, but the slight upwards twist. Uh, I would be saying, however, though, this green 50 exponential has been a massive harasser for price action over the past year. And you can see that we are right there right now. That is that is what rejected the last run above 4,000 and obviously the run before that. But for the past year, the history has been for this 50 exponential that each and every time that Bitcoin gets above it, that kind of calls the last ditch effort of that rally attempt. Uh, let's go back to the last time that we actually saw it was right over here in September 
getting above the green 50 exponential for just one second and then boom right back down to the downside of the range time before that was right over here in august on the run to 8400 uh lives above it for for quite a bit of time actually breaks back down below it right here and then straight move down to 6000 the time before that was a lot more precise at 10000 right over here price action getting above and then smash right back down to the low side of the range time before that was in february of last year at uh, the double top at 12000 gets right back down below the 50 exponential right here and then full on move down to 6000 so this is very important because, you know, it works until it doesn't. And, and the trend is your friend in, until the end of the trend. And right now, we are still respecting it as resistance. However, as you probably noticed from the last few examples, when Bitcoin got when after Bitcoin got above the 50 exponential and then and then broke it back down to the downside, it actually did not give you it didn't give you a second time to actually sell it like like it's kind of giving you right here. So this is a little bit suspect is what I'm trying to say. Or let me actually confirm that just really quick. OK, this this one was straight move through straight move through. Um straight move through straight move through yeah all the other ones have been straight move through so that is worthwhile to consider because you know bitcoin is being quite resilient right now and, and in fact the two-day total time frame gets it perfectly with the exponentials 50 exponential resistance for this formation 21 exponential support for this formation however this formation is just one piece of the whole of this whole formation right here so while this formation can be made to uh can be said to be can be said to be is that right? Can be said to be uh, as constructive, aka potentially more bullish. Uh, the formation as a whole, this whole formation, I would say is more corrective in nature. So it's really going to hinge on where we close this next monthly. But I'd imagine that that is going to be the full on confirmation that I need to see for the next likely big trade. However, when it comes to actual, you know, big trades, whether it is to the upside or the downside, I would still be using the pink 200 simple moon average to the downside if I were to take a massive trade to perhaps, you know, mid to low 2000s and the purple. 200 exponential to the upside if i was looking for a trade into the you know into the mid 4000s and maybe maybe 47 to 4800 uh as far as more upside on top of that i'm not uh, you would have to kind of take it as we see it but that's what i'd see in the more immediate time frames and even immediate time frames we're talking about on a weekly scale right now so that could quite literally take months to begin with um anyways jesus christ man this forex shit is just on fire right now wow powerful move powerful forex anyways um yeah, you know, if the pink joint and some moon average breaks to the downside, then this whole formation would, in my opinion, be fully confirmed for a nice downside move, probably into the deep to low uh, 2000s, I'd imagine. Anyways, um, let's go back on to spot charts. Uh, actually, sorry, no, let's not go on to spot charts. Let's go on to CME charts, see what the CMEs look like. And again, CME is the more critical one. And this is why I put much more weight on CMEs. Remember this trend line right over here, the one that had been holding price action back from November all the way to basically this, you know, mid. Uh, middle of March where we broke out of it on extremely low volume right now. Uh, we actually came back to base on this trend line and have rallied off of it. So that is a good sign. And I do believe that I have this charted wrong or just or perhaps on a daily time frame. But you know, are we still making a rising wedge coming off this area? Very possible. The volumes, the, uh, the volume signature would be supportive of that statement um, as consolidation in a nice kind of rising upwards fashion, which typically does break onto the downside, not always, but statistically more likely to. Um, Anyways, uh, the more important thing amongst anything else is that this area right here, I need to see this area actually broken fully from CMEs to get, you know, to, to be more confident in the downside. Um, right now, we're, ho we're obviously hovering around 39.75. Resistance going to be coming right around 40.50-ish area. But more importantly, overall, you know, it's um, it uh, it is this this area right here that if Bitcoin were to violate to the downside and is declining over time. So the other day it was like thirty nine hundred. Now it's about thirty nine thirty eight uh, sixty ish area. Um, if we were to actually break this, that's when I become super bear within this whole consolidation. That would be my first initial kind of uh, warning signal. So if Bitcoin could actually smash back down through this area. Then I'd be looking for, you know, for a retest, probably down around to the thirty five fifty ish range, um, which would also, you know, complete and fulfill a retest of this rising support trend line coming in all the way from my current lows in middle of December. Anyways, my point is, is that as a trader, again, as a trader, not as a, an opinion person, but as a trader, I would have to be neutral as long as we're within this range right here. And from the higher time for perspective, as long as we are above the 200 simple and below the 200 exponential, 3450 to 4100 essentially um if if if, if we can actually break this formation out to the upside 40 you know b above about 40 20 it looks like uh, i would be looking for that move the measure moves technically is pointing all the way to 4400 if we make the if it, uh, if we break it to the downside with a move below 3860 uh closure below there then not only would i get bearish for move down to the low side of the range but also cmes would be broken and i'd be probably become 
I'd probably be taking some pretty massive positions based off that. Until that happens, the only thing to be doing for the past uh, month or so, ever since we got ourselves into this consolidation mess right here, was be a buyer and support, seller and resistance. It literally been no more complicated than that. I mean, it's easier said than done, especially when price actually moves like fucking molasses for uh, for days on end. Um, but hey, you know, chart your shit out, and uh, and really the play has been short 4000s buy and, and then buy this rise of support trend line in this more immediate uh, in this more immediate consolidation. Um, anyways, uh, let's see what our four hour, uh, oscillators are doing. Four hour stokes are up and getting quite erect actually, uh, very erect. So let me get rid of this, uh, uh, that trend line right there. Uh, four hour RSI is popping back up as well. Do we have anything else to say about it though? Is there any, you know, I mean, we, I, I'm pretty sure that the bullish divergence has played out by now. Um, we have made our way into the deep neutral zone towards the bullish control zone. I don't really have anything other to say other than that. I mean, this is more neutral than anything, just kind of, you know, flying between both zones in the overall consolidation. So it's really more pro to be looking at the higher time frames right now, which are significantly more neutral um, in the more current posturing of this. Uh, let's see, what about the, let's, let's go to, let's go to X this time frame. Let's go to an eight hour. Yeah, eight hours looking about the same actually. Eight hour Stokes fresh cross up. We spoke about this last night that you know Bitcoin was kind of likely to test a little bit higher um, with the blue box territory as the contingency for you know you know actually like switching around the narrative of the current consolidation, um, which did happen. But the eight hour Stokes had already you know had, I remember that they freshly crossed up last night, and now we're kind of seeing it play out in confluence with that four hour uh, you know um, what was it bullish divergence. Anyways, uh, I think that does it for Bitcoin. Let's go check out GBDC really quick. GBDC right over here. Just keep on checking my uh, my forces. My God, man, this there has been so many play. Like just in this, I, I think I've maybe been talking for ten minutes now. Um, in this ten minutes, there's been two trade, two like pretty good trades to be to uh, to have been had. Um, lower time frames, of course. I'm I'm trading I'm trading much lower time frames on forex. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you know, it keeps you busy. Anyways, uh, GBDC over here having a ooh closing a long-legged Doge diddle right on the support right at end of day. So probably gonna open up on this guy. I'd imagine probably we do open up on this guy. Um, I'm curious to see. I'm very curious to see because GBDC has been the great leading indicator for Bitcoin. And uh, while yesterday we did fuck around right on this, on the major support trend line, which let's go to a daily to really get this one right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we did close a nice doji doodle right at it, which typically is a signal of indecision, perhaps even reversal on very low volume. So if we do if we do open up the day, or if or if we just if if we even just get back above 469 right here, which I'm gonna probably guess that we uh, you know. Personally speaking, we probably do open above that area. Um, then I would be looking for more continuation probably onto this area right here, which would put Bitcoin around that 4,000 area. Um, more importantly though, GBDC is a little bit more bearish on the overall stature of its formation. GBDC stokes, daily stokes are down. These daily stokes have been pretty damn good at getting a lot of the major move downs for the past year. Each and every time that we see them cross down, pretty hefty downwards uh, momentum moves uh, happening after that. Not only that, but uh, daily RSI is printing bearish divergence, and I believe that that is still not uh, played out just yet. I'd like to see the RSI at least get, at least test the bearish control zone. You can see that we are pretty far away from that right now, um, and you do see that you know you uh, you do see the twenty one exponential right here at four dollars and sixty four and a half cents. But 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 you know if 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 we're gonna make confluences between this one and uh, and all the spot charts, you know you really you know have to what is going on here antivirus. Hey, get off my computer viruses. <laughs> That's a way to get rid of your viruses. Here, I'll be your John McCafe. Get out of here, you fucking malware. <laughs> You're not welcomed here. It's like, who even thinks that that shit's going to work anyways? Um, uh, Elsa got some malware on her computer recently, and it's just like, it gives her messages saying like, hi, I'm online right now. Do you want to talk with Larissa, who's half naked? It's like, does anyone fall for this? Does anyone fall for this? Don't answer that question. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, GBDC would would actually have a little bit more of a bearish posturing overall, um, and actually would be looking for that. Uh, sorry for that bearish divergence to have another stab. But could it be that we have another retest of this horizontal trend line right here at about five dollars first? Possibly. Uh, possibly triple top in this area. Yeah, it's very possible. Also, the eighty nine coming in right around that area as well, which has been harassing price section ever since. I mean, Jesus Christ, man, GBTC has been unable to get above it since uh, late April. Uh, pretty bad. Uh, but, you know, really to get bearish on this guy, I need, I need to see this area broken, 455. Uh, we didn't quite get it yesterday. And, you know, this is this is why I always like to separate my opinion from technical analysis. And, you know, until, until technical analysis tells me to take a trade, don't fucking take it, man. Um, <clears throat> anyways, whoa, Jesus, man. 
It's taking more legs up over there. Alrighty, as I switch my uh, my position. Anyways, uh, yeah, so let's see what else we want to talk about. Yeah, I do want to go back on over here to the weekly for GBDC because uh, the weekly is still pretty, you know, still pretty bearish. Uh, no matter which way that you cut it, I look at this weekly as a rejection of the yellow 21 exponential right here, which, you know, has been stopping GBDC ever since that same uh, April, August area. Sorry, April, April and May area right here on the run to 10,000 on spot. Um, to me, this looks like another rejection. And more importantly, if we bring up our oscillators, we do have, do we have any hidden bearish divergence? I mean, it's kind of hard to say because did we really make a, mm, uh, no, I, I don't believe so. I, th I think my eyes are deceiving me right now. Um, what else do we have to look at? Uh, weekly stokes are getting pretty mature, uh, actually reaching for the bullish control zone for the first time in a very long time. Very, very long time. I mean, January 2018 was the last time that we were this high on the Stokes on the weekly for that. Similar thing with Spot, actually, as well. We can just go back and confirm that really quickly. Uh, let's go back on over here, and let's see. Yeah, about the same, actually, on on uh, on weekly Stokes for both. We're right at the edge of the bullish control zone. Last time we were here was quite literally January of 2018. So could we actually be seeing the initial the initial stages of something new going on? I mean, it's always something to consider, but like I said, from a macro dildo time frame perspective, I need to see this area taken out. This, this 4,100 area, the 200 expense on the weekly until that's taken out i you know it's it's just more of the same the trend is your front to the trend i mean that's that's what i'll be taking um if that area does get taken out though however that really does open up the possibility for like i said uh you know a test into the 4400 maybe 4700 and then you got to start thinking about the monthly right because the monthly 21 exponential is going to be the next big kind of piece of the pie for me switching from neutral bearish to bullish and i would you know if bitcoin takes out the 21 exponential to the upside uh right around 5200 then i would i would not want to be bearish anymore however it's also very very likely that bitcoin you know if bitcoin were to close this next monthly above the 50 exponential that it probably come up and test the 10 simple and 21 exponential cross right here which do want to cross uh, on the next tick and you know, does that get rejected or not? I would, I would imagine on first pass it probably does get rejected uh, as this overall does not necessarily look like a bottom information just yet. Still pretty, still pretty young in its overall, uh, in its overall measurement. But I do believe that we have another two week closing. Is it this week or did we just close one last week? We will be closing it this week. Yes. So the two week total time frame will very, in, in barring any sort of major, um, barring any sort of major fuck up here, the two-day total time frame will actually both open and close a two-week total above this red 10 simple moon average. And the reason why that is important is because we have been unable to do that ever since the market was essentially bullish. We had a one-off right here. We would close it above, and then the next week just shoved right back down below. Well, as you can see, the 10 simple is coming in all the way at... Uh, 37.50 now so bitcoin's going to really have to you know accelerate to the downside uh before the end of the weekend if you know if 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 this is going to remain now i do see that we have a pretty nasty exponential movement average cross right here uh between the green and the yellow the 50 and the 21 crossing the downside and they are gaining divergence away from each other so it's certainly not over and said you know over and done with just yet um i would be very 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 careful in these ranges because i would imagine that we're probably going to see resolution on this formation before the end of the weekend and that's going to give us insight into where this you know where where the next piece of the puzzle falls again if it gets resolved to the downside probably going to see the domino effect bring it all the way back down to 35 50 ish area if we bring it up to the upside i'd be seeing i'll be looking for a run probably to 43 44 45 um so again that is that uh, uh that is what is at stake right now anyways let me just check on over here jesus christ man what in the hell what in the hell, baby? What in the hell? All righty. Um, okay, cool. So let's get back on over to our Bitcoin charts. Let's go look at uh, Mr. Buterall now. What's Mr. Buterall doing? Bueller, 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 <laughs> Bueller. Uh, Mr. Buterall holding above the 50 exponential yesterday. Jesus Christ, man, even open and closed one, uh, a daily total below the 50 exponential, but still chugging its way along. Again, kind of just riding the rest of the market. Um, but you could also just interpret this as a retest of this broken uh, diagonal trend line going on from here from early March. And that's what we're testing right now. So, you know, so far, it is rejecting it, I guess, ever so slightly. I mean, not like it's not like a very obvious rejection, right? Uh, this is what we were looking at on the four hour total time frame, something like this. In fact, if I actually do adjust it for the four hour, it does actually make quite a bit of sense. So I do like that. Uh, and as long as we're kind of living below this 139 and a half area, I would be saying that this is the big resistance that is. And could Bitcoin, or sorry, could Mr. Buter, Mr. Bueller get uh, ground down from here? Absolutely. Uh, let's go look at our oscillators. Four hour stokes are up and actually breaking this trend line. Um, what about, I'm curious what the dailies are looking like. Daily is losing momentum to the downside. And let's go look at the weekly as well. What's the weekly looking like? Mm, 
Weekly still consulting below a major exponential moving average. Mm, don't have a strong opinion on this. We do. We actually do have some massive hidden bearish divergence between this point over here and this point over here. As you can see, uh, significantly higher high, significantly lower high. Um, sorry, significantly or sorry, significantly lower high right here in comparison to this guy right here. As all, as you also to make a significantly higher high, uh, that would not be a good setup either. So again, I'm not too impressed by that. Uh, let's go to the two day little time frame. Two day little time frame certainly looks a lot more neutral to slightly bearish than anything um whoa jesus man what was that move wow man I, that's that's the third move now that i missed holy shit that is insane that is just the amount of opportunity in that game is just insane um Anyways, a very similar picture to Mr. Bitcoin on the two-day dildo time frame, but this one's a lot more sloppy uh, and a little bit more droopy to downwards looking right now. Um, do we have anything on the oscillators? We do have actually two-day stokes up. So so all two-day stokes for all the majors are actually up right now and gaining momentum up. Um, that is what makes me, that uh, that is probably the most bullish thing that I've seen. Uh, let's go check out, um, let's go check out the, let's, let's go back to the daily really quick. I don't think I actually did the dregs on this guy. Yeah, daily daily stokes are losing momentum to the downside. Daily looks like it wants to give another test into the 144 region. Um, basically, the area the areas of play for Mr. Buterol from the higher time frame perspective are 144 and this 135 and a half support right here. This one's a lot more sloppy though. I I, I don't trust it all that much. This one's it would be difficult to trade right now. We didn't get the volume follow through that we want. So really this is all its own consolidation is what I'd be more inclined to say doing something like this with a resistance right here at 143 and a half and rises support trend line right here, right around the 382 Fibonacci retracement, which looks like it did break down the other day. However, no follow through, no volume confirmation and just gets rebought right back on up, making this game much more difficult. But this is why I like to look at all the top majors because Bitcoin was a little bit more clear that we had not broken major supports just yet. Um, this is Litecoin also doing Doing the same. In fact, let's go look at her. Uh, look at this independent lady right now. And Mrs. Litecoin having another reaction right off. Ooh, nice. So we got the move down to the 21 exponential right here at uh, $56.80, and then bouncing off that. Yes. Um. Still, I mean, it. it to me, this this golden cross is is it's gonna happen. Unless if we have a massive move down today, this will happen. Uh, that's a green 50 and the purple 200 exponential right here right now. Um. And I really don't like trading against anything like that. I really don't like trading against anything like that. And Mrs. Likewin has led the market to the upside. So does she does she lead this market out of the bear market? Potentially. It's it's a potential. That is what happened in 2014, 2015, to be fair. You know, and really do you have to be honest about these sorts of things. Um, because, well, honesty is a way that you're gonna make fucking money. Um, anyways, uh, it's three seven seven exponential right here. This dark blue is still resisting price action. We are still in the formation of an ascending broadening wedge, and we do have daily stokes still. Ooh, they want to cross the upside, but we got a long day left to go. And uh, daily RSI still printing bearish divergence all the way through. Um, so I would, you know, I'd still. I'd still, I'd still rather have the finger on the, on the safety pin right now, not necessarily on the trigger, just because I want to see how this reacts a little bit more. If we go down to the lower time frames, we can see a very obvious uh, supporting resistance trend line in the more immediate time frames, going all the way over on over here, uh, something like this, and you can see that we've actually retested it once again. Uh, this is starting to flag out now, though. This, th this would take on a more bullish interpretation for this consolidation, um, regardless of all the divergences on the daily and whatnot. Uh, that is worth considering. Um, but more importantly, more importantly speaking, just to kind of get rid of all of the nonsense and all of the hearsay. If Mrs. Likewin breaks $58 on like a, you know, on a four hour total closure, I'd be looking for that move down to $56. Um, but, uh, but if Mrs. Likewin breaks, you know, 60, 60 and a half bucks to the upside, I, I would be looking for this to formally test at the very least $63 and a half dollars. And if $63 and a half dollars is taken out to the upside, this, I mean, there's no more reason to be bearish on Mrs. Likewin from my perspective. Of course, everyone's going to be different, but but from my perspective, they would no longer be. And that's probably going to come, come in confluence with a daily total golden cross, which is at most two days away, I'd say. Mm, okay, maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but... Yeah, may, maybe about two days ahead. If 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 Mrs. Likewin can maintain above fifty seven dollars above the twenty one on the daily, uh, yeah. I mean, we got the move down to the twenty one yesterday on the daily, and then beautiful reaction right off, right on off. I mean, this is what we kind of been talking about for the past few weeks. If and when the golden cross does get close to happening, I want to look at that twenty one exponential to kind of give me insight and if, if it's going to get played or not. And right now, it looks like it wants to get played. But of course, as with any cross, I don't enter until it's actually fully confirmed. Because a lot of times you will get hunts at the very last second. You know, a lot of the major market movers know that everyone's looking at something like this. So you can play games with them um, until it's fully confirmed. And then the games uh, strongly diminish. Anyways, go check out... Um
what else do we want to check out? I actually added Cardano to my list of shit to check on it. And uh, we spoke about it yesterday that it was likely to grind that 30, or, sorry, 1650 ish area. Looks like we will get that test formally uh, right around 1650 to 1700. Sorry, it's, it's really 1650 right here um, or 1675. I don't. I, I I do think that this that this test will likely be rejected. To be honest with you. Um, but I don't think that it's a death sentence for Cardano. I think that Cardano, I, I, I would certainly be leaning more to the upside on Cardano as long as it's hovering above 1350-ish area. As long as it's defending this breakout trend line right here, I am respectful of it, but I wouldn't be looking for it to actually beast through this next resistance right, right below 1700 uh, beforehand, be, uh, before going under consolidation, probably coming back and retesting one of these lower levels, maybe even 1400 at some point. Uh, but for now, we are getting that uh, we uh, we are getting that grind that we spoke about yesterday at the former highs but i would be i i don't think that's going to break this resistance right here right now let's go look at our also we do have daily stokes extremely mature right now they are okay i mean you can get them you, they can stay up there for a long time no doubt about that uh daily rsi is is okay as well actually rallying off of the edge of the bullish children that's actually quite bullish um but i would be cognizant of the lower time frames which, which are likely printing a lot of bearish divergence right now in fact you can see it already forming right here uh one two three stabs so also don't like trading against that. I would imagine that we probably put in some time grinding this like 1650-ish area and then uh, and then and then pop back down to consolidate a little bit lower. Uh, however, I would not be bearish on it until it actually breaks 1350 to the downside. Um, let's go check out uh, let's go check out BNB cone BNB the uh, <laughs> Binance is fucking baby. Uh, Binance is beanie babies. Is that what it stands for? Beanie babies Binance. Um, we do see a rejection of this horizontal right here, coming all the way back from uh, the highs in June of last year, June and, uh, sorry, middle of June last year. Um, and again, we are printing bearish divergence on this guy as well between all these last former highs, one, two, three stabs and down. Now struggling to hold and maintain in the bullish control zone. Um, I would be looking for this to actually probably come down as well a little bit. I do, you know, it's kind of similar to Cardano where I want to see it grind this resistance right around $17 and a quarter, and then probably come back down to, to base somewhere around maybe even $14 again and reaccumulate this area. Uh, but overall, same sort of moniker on this as Mrs. Litecoin is like, it's right there on the very verge of breaking out and and into the, you know, in and into a non bearish market. I mean, this this one is not bearish, to be clear, it's not been bearish ever since it broke back above right here, nine, nine and a half dollars. That was the big moniker for that. Um, but right now, it's like, you know, am I am I neutral? I'm neutral to slightly bullish on it. But am I am I here's here's what I'm trying to say. Am I looking for this trend line to be broken right here at $17 and a quarter, like right now? No, I'm not. I think that it grinds that area, then pops back down, reaccumulates lower, probably somewhere, maybe as low as a $14 region, and then tries again higher. That's what I think is more likely to happen. Um, let's go get let's go check out Zcash. Is he still in the descending triangle? He is. Oh man. Just let him out of the descending triangle. My God. Uh B Cash. We got Z Cash. We got B Cash. B Cash uh, looking actually a lot more healthy. Uh slowly but surely crawling his way up. However, gonna be dealing with a lot of bearish divergence right now. I do believe that we are kind of going to see the end of this rally relatively soon um whether we get you know whether we formally test this uh, 175 region first is kind of irrelevant to me i do think that this rally probably does come down uh you know probably get another run to test this area to imagine though uh let's see daily stocks are up daily rsi bearish divergence mm. Yeah, in in unless if this thing shatters 175 and a half, I would be careful with it. If it does shatter 175 and a half, then the next stop I'd be looking for is 200 dollars even actually. Uh, Tron Cash, Tron Cash, right in the middle of its range. I'm gonna guess. Yes, indeed it is. Again, support right around here, 2.2 cent resistance at two and a half cent. It's been the only thing to do for the last week on this one, just buy support, sell resistance, and still that you know, still that game. I mean, shit, man. If you're trading Tron uh, versus Dollar, this has been pretty cut and dry actually. Uh, Neo Cash, what's Neo Cash doing? Neo Cash taking another leg up with the rest of the market as well, retesting some major exponentials. But the but the major resistance that is and that will be is right around 960-ish area. So as long as we're below that, it is pressure on as far as I'm concerned. With a rising support trend line coming in right here, governing these lows actually very similar to Bitcoin's uh, setup. Let me get rid of this. This is not this is not appropriate anymore. We already saw that move. Uh, we already saw that move happen. Um, but yeah, resistance 960, support eh, 880. Uh, what about EOS Cash? EOS Cash taking a leg up. Ooh, oh my God, powerful EOS Cash. Powerful EOS Cash uh, did take out the 200 simple to the upside, and now we are right around that $4.10 area that we spoke about. Um, if this area does get taken out, I'd be looking for that move to 450. 
Uh, nice move by e EOS. Actually, looks like it wants some more too. I would, I would not be. Uh, I, I think this is one of the better charts that I've seen um, in this range. Uh, I do. I, I actually do think that'll probably test test that four dollars fifty cent region. But of course, it's going to depend on whatever Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin, you know, wants to top on over, well, EOS cash probably not going to be safe from all the destruction. Uh, but if you know, if Bitcoin can kind of keep it together or even rally with it, well, then it's, you're probably going to see a, a, a much more powerful leg. Uh, let's go look at Ripple's cash. Uh, Ripple's cash hit hit all the way down to the twenty nine cent region, bouncing off that. I mean, Ripple has been for for as ugly as this chart looks, it's actually been probably the easiest chart to trade <laughs> and i say that and i say that with great reservation and, and let me explain that it's been a game of support resistance until it's not and this is what i'm trying to say is this is how i make my living just buying support selling resistance more often than not i don't really play the breakouts all that often yeah i did play that last breakout on bitcoin just because i think that that was a little bit more of an obvious one especially with the way that the daily total closed in fact i even left in a resting order for that you know stop market buy um while, while i was sleeping um <clears throat> but uh but hey you know looking at mr ripple's nipples cash Support, major support, 29 cents. Major resistance is this declining trend line right here. We did break the more preliminary support right here yesterday. So I'd imagine that we pop back up and test that. I want to see it uh, act as resistance, which is going to be right around uh, 31 cent. And then perhaps another move. However, let's look at this. Uh, daily stokes are losing momentum. Do you want to cross the upside? Daily RSI is trying to call out of the bearish control zone, but overall the RSI would be more bearish. Again, probably going to follow the rest of the market, but def certainly on the weaker side in comparison to everything. When we're talking about relative strength and relative weakness, Mr. Ripple's nipples is, he's free, but he's also relatively weak. Let's go check out uh, Stellar Cash. Uh, Stellar Cash bouncing off the 50 exponential as we spoke about yesterday. Uh, probably going to come back and at least test 10.6 cent, maybe maybe 10.9 cent area right over here. Uh, I'd be looking for that to be the next, you know, to act as the next resistance. If I did buy the 50 exponential down, uh, 50 exponential down here, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Uh, you know, I'd be selling right right around here. And then if we do take out 10, uh, 11 cents the upside, then I would get back again long. But I do think, you know, on, at first glance, probably does get rejected as. Uh, would like to see a move a little bit lower overall, but hey, you know, this is the game of supporting resistance right now. So I'm actually gonna put in a blue box territory right here, and that would be the next sort of trade idea that I'll be looking at on this guy. Of course, it's not financial advice, but not a financial advisor. Just kind of sharing my opinions on what I do in the exact sort of same sort of situations that you might find yourself in. Uh, let's go look at uh, SPY, traditional marks right now. We'll do some traditional marks and maybe Forex, and then call it a day. But uh, but SPY closing the day back down below the 10 simple moon average. Right at this horizontal trend line right here. Man, this makes it so fucking difficult. I I am not going to be bearish as long as you have a golden cross on the daily and you're above the 21 exponential. I can't be bearish. But the second that we lose this guy, I'd be looking for that move down to 275.5. And, and I'm gonna t just going to take a sip of this water because I'm damn thirsty. There we go. Feeling better, baby. Feeling better. <clears throat> But yeah, you know, as long as it's above the 21, I can't be bearish on it. I can't be bearish on it. I also don't necessarily have to be bullish on it, but I would be, I guess I'd be cautiously long right now. If I had to choose direction, I guess I'd be cautiously long. I don't want to be. I do feel like it comes down. I strongly feel like it comes down to this 275 and a half area. Uh, even the jewel giving a sell signal right around here as well. RSI says major bearish divergence and coming down. Uh, but hey, from a trading perspective, Again, it works both ways. It works both ways. And I need to see this area broken, uh, 279. If 279 can be broken and closed below, then I'd be looking for that move to 275, which I do. my opinion is I do think that's certainly more likely. By the same token, as long as we're above the 21, it's really not appropriate to be bearish, at least from my perspective. Um, let's go down to a lower time frame and see if there's any any more insight in these uh, in these time frames. Yeah, lower time frames do look do look like they kind of want to grind out this, two, this, this like just above 281-ish area. And then probably come back down and uh, and test two seventy five and a half. That's essentially what I'd be thinking. Here. Ugh. Coughing up some ground beef. It was really good though, <laughs> really fucking good. Anyways, uh, back on a Bitcoin. I'll start to wrap this bitch up because well, it's actually been quite a fun day. Uh, it's actually been quite a fun like last week trading this. We had a couple. We had a move to the downside, then move to the upside. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. No, of course not, man. It's just. Just you know, you know this market is uh, very quiet when you're getting excited about these uh, fifty dollar moves. <clears throat> Anyways, um, okay, so here's what I can say about Bitcoin. I would be looking at this guy for resistance right around forty twenty ish area um, for this formation. If we do break to the upside of it, I would be looking for that move at the very least to forty one ten, forty one fifty ish area. Test the two hundred exponential on the weekly one more time, and at that point, you know, 
the whole story starts, starts to change. Although I'm not necessarily like fully convinced on this. Uh, this to me does look like it wants to at the very least come back down and test the blue box territory. However, that's going to be the next big insight into price action. What do we do at this blue box territory? Do we fail it around 39.40? Well, then I'll take the same trade that I took the other day. I'll take another short and be looking for somewhere down, you know, in the mid 3800s, so 3860, 3850ish area would look about right. Uh, but as long as we hold above this blue box territory, you know, probably, you know, uh, you know, I'd probably be a buyer at first, or I'm not going to get any more long than I already am, and uh, and then and then probably target somewhere around this area right below 4000, which is essentially what we just saw and grind this area out. By the same token, to the downside, I don't get super bearish until we actually break 38.50 to the downside um and more preliminarily bearish until we break the uh until we break this 39.30 area to the to the downside of the blue box territory essentially so that's going to do it for right now that's uh essentially what i'm thinking i'll be back on later with some more live stream action look forward to that need to go buy myself a computer uh, sorry not a computer but a keyboard now for my new computer so we can get on and uh and upgrade some of the k features which i'm really excited about so again guys been an absolute pleasure to speak with you on this lovely uh tuesday no no it's wednesday hey have yourself a nice and happy Wednesday. I'll be back on later and uh, look forward to seeing you there. Take care.